Hey guys, it's Mariana, and today I'm going to be doing my last wrap up of 2015 in 2016, obviously because I needed to wait for December to end to do my wrap up because I am somebody who is still reading and watching stuff on the last day of the month. So today I'm going to be talking about all of the books, comics, and movies that I read and watched throughout December. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen that I was considering splitting this video into two parts because I have so many movies to talk about. I've been trying to catch up on movies that I've missed in 2015, so there's quite a few things to talk about, but I decided that I'm just going to make one long wrap up as I always do, and as I always do have all of the timestamps in the infrared below. So if you want to skip around the video between books, comic books, well, one comic book series, I bet you know what that one is, and movies, you can do so. Just take a look in the infrared below, and I will also have everything linked in there that I'm talking about and any of the reviews that I have for what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's get into the wrap up and I'm starting with books as I always do. The first book that I read in December was How I Live Now, which is something that was nowhere near my to read list to begin with, but I randomly watched a movie adaptation of How I Live Now on Netflix because I saw that Saoirse Ronan was in that movie and I really like her, so I decided to give it a shot. And after watching the movie, I actually decided that I needed to read the book because it is a pretty interesting dystopian drama I would say it is about a young girl named Elizabeth and she is sent to live with her cousins in England and the third world war breaks out and they kind of have to deal with it. Controversially, I actually enjoyed the movie more than I enjoyed the book. I ended up giving the book three out of five stars. I still liked it. It had a very interesting stream of consciousness type of writing style, and I know some people don't do very well with that, but I actually really liked that part about the book. But it is a very, very strange story and some very strange things happen. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but there is something that happens on this book that you can see it coming from the very beginning and you kind of hope that they don't go there, but they do go there and it is just, it's too much. It's too strange. It was too weird for me. I still enjoyed it because of the topic and because of how the characters got developed after they had to deal with this war and after they had to adjust the way they live their lives, but in general, it's a little bit too strange for me. Then for something completely different and once again kind of inspired by the movie, I decided to reread Macbeth and this is a very famous Shakespeare tragedy. I'm sure I don't need to really introduce it to you. I gave it five out of five stars. There is no way I would have given it any less because this is a fantastic fantastic play. I'm somebody who really loves Shakespeare to begin with, but this play in particular is one of my favorites. And I actually think if you're trying to get into Shakespeare, this is a good place to start because it's pretty straightforward compared to some of the more complex plays that he has and the plot is definitely fascinating. And this edition is something I really enjoyed as well because as you can see it's pretty thick and it has a lot of extra information as far as history and the background of the play and the performances and how the text kind of evolved throughout the years. So if you're interested in something like that, I would definitely suggest picking up this particular edition of the play. But if not, the play itself is fantastic. After that, and you may be surprised by this, but I read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone, depending on where you live. I have never read Harry Potter. It's just not something I grew up with. When I first heard about Harry Potter, I was finishing high school and I definitely thought it was way too old because that's what people think when they're teenagers. I was way too old for this kid stuff, so I just never read it until now. So I decided to finally check out the series because everybody talks about, I swear, a day does not go by without me hearing about Harry Potter in some way or seeing something related to Harry Potter. So I decided to check it out and I was actually surprised by how much I liked it. First of all, I really enjoyed the writing and this was kind of a nice surprise for me because the first book in the series is definitely very much kind of middle grade 
almost a young adult and I thought the writing was going to be a bit too plain for my taste but even though it has that kind of whimsical middle grade quality to it it is not too plain in any way and it is not first person either so I actually really enjoyed the way it was written and the story is very very interesting it definitely kept me reading and I didn't want to put this down. Basically I was really excited to find out that you can still enjoy Harry Potter and be interested in the series as an adult who doesn't have any kind of childhood nostalgia about it and I am definitely continuing with the series. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I think it's only going to get better from here and I am pretty excited to read the next book. And the last book that I read in December was The Girl Who Played With Fire by Stieg Larsson and this is the second book in the Millennium Trilogy. I read The Girl With The Dragon Tattoo in November if you've seen my wrap up and really enjoyed it. And as you can see my reading month in December has been all over the place with the genres but I really enjoyed this one too. I still have the same issues that I had with the girl with the dragon tattoo when it came to the girl who played with fire because the writing is just not my favorite part about the series. It is way too detailed and it makes it feel like it doesn't flow as well as it should. And when I say way too detailed, I don't just mean when there is some kind of investigation going on and there are too many details about the case. No, I mean when you have a character and the author needs to let you know what brand of coffee they're drinking as they're sitting on their specific type of Ikea couch. This is just something I don't need to know when I'm reading a book. It's just too much. But the story is really good. I really like the characters. Even though I know where all of this is going because I have seen the movies, I'm still very much enjoying the series. I ended up giving this book four out of five stars mainly because of the writing but to be honest I am enjoying the plot so much and I obviously don't remember every single detail from the movies and I'm sure there are some things that just were not in the movies and that's why I don't remember them so there's still enough there to surprise me. Moving on to comics I've only read one title in December and as you can probably guess it was American Vampire. It's volume 5 this time around and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be reading volume 6 in January. That's just how it works. I really enjoyed this, of course. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I didn't think it was as strong as some of the previous volumes. It felt a little bit disjointed to me because about a third of this has to do with one thing. Then there's this whole section about our usual characters. And then at the end, there is a little bit about something that's probably starting a new storyline. And all of these didn't seem to connect very well, which I guess is fine, but I just don't understand why there are so many things going on that don't seem to have to do much with each other. So individually, these storylines are interesting. It just doesn't make sense for them to be in one volume, if you know what I mean. However, really enjoyed this volume's take on Dracula. That's all I'm going to say about that. And Skinner Sweet is Skinner Sweet, as always. He is just... A terrible person but so wonderful to read about. I love him. And finally moving on to movies and before I get into all the 2015 movies that I watched in December I quickly want to talk about Inside Lewin Davis because if you've seen my previous wrap-ups you know that sometimes I like to shout out older movies, this isn't that old, this is from like 2013 I think, older movies that have really stood out to me and this one definitely did. This is a Coen Brothers film about a folk musician in the 60s in New York kind of struggling through career and life and this is starring Oscar Isaac who is fantastic. I feel like if anyone else played the lead role they could have made the lead character very unlikable because he's not the most likable human being but Oscar Isaac makes him very likable and also this has a really good supporting cast. You have Carey Mulligan, you have John Goodman, Justin Timberlake, Adam Driver and it has a fantastic soundtrack. I think most people would enjoy this film. Basically if you haven't seen this yet check it out if you have seen it and it's been a while watch it again and now on to 2015 movies first of all i finally sat down and watched amy the documentary about amy winehouse and it was 
as good as everyone says it is. It is a fascinating documentary, so much interesting footage, very heartbreaking story. I'm not somebody who was super into her music. I don't think I really knew much about her until it became kind of a scandalous discussion, which is kind of sad because through this documentary, I was able to discover how talented this musician was, and it was definitely horrible to see the treatment that she got from the press and how the struggles of her life were just ridiculed in the media and in popular culture and all of that. Basically, check out this documentary. It is very, very good. Even if you're not a fan of Amy Winehouse's music, you will still find this interesting because it's a very, very well done film. Then I decided to check out The Hallow, which is a horror film that you probably haven't really heard of, but I think if you enjoy beautifully shot horror films, this one is a good one to check out. I ended up giving it three out of five stars because the story itself is kind of by the numbers horror film. There's this couple with a baby, they move into this old house next to the forest, people try to warn them that this is a shady place, but they don't listen and they end up dealing with some really creepy looking creatures. So it is kind of a cliche story, but it is absolutely gorgeous and it is rooted in Irish folklore, which makes it even more interesting. So it is a decently entertaining horror film, and if you do like beautifully done practical effects, this is definitely one to check out. However, don't expect this to be your new favorite horror movie. I think the main problem that I had with this film is that despite the really slow first act, I never grew very attached to the characters. The movie never really made me care about the leads, which you kind of need in the horror film in order to be concerned for them later. So as a result, I just wanted to get back to the creepiness and the visual effects and all of that and trust me all of that looks great and the forest is just so beautiful in this movie but I did want more from the actual plot and from the characters. The other horror movie that I saw in December was Krampus and this is a Christmas horror film which is an interesting genre that kind of always gets me excited because it's an interesting twist on Christmas. This was actually a pretty fun movie to watch, but as a horror film, it did not succeed at all because it was not scary. It had some really creepy moments, it had some pretty cool creepy imagery, but not scary in any way. And once again, not really good with the characters either. Most of the characters in this movie are jerks. And when bad things start happening to them, you don't feel bad at all. I was rooting for Krampus this entire film, which by the way is based on a folklore creature that's kind of the evil side of Saint Nicholas. I ended up giving this movie three out of five stars. It has some beautiful imagery and some really cool visual effects. I kind of have the same comments for it as I do for The Hallow, I'm realizing right now, but it could have been better and it could have gone further with the themes that it tried to touch on. There's a particular opening scene that kind of portrays how people treat Christmas these days. Kind of the entire movie is based on the fact that Christmas is like the stressful holiday that is focused on shopping and it's something to get through instead of something to enjoy with your family. But it really doesn't go full on on that theme or on the horror side. Then I decided to check out Trumbo, which is a biopic about Dalton Trumbo, who was one of Hollywood's most esteemed screenwriters, and then he was blacklisted for his political beliefs, particularly for being a communist. And this is a pretty by the numbers biopic, but the performances are what you want to see in this. Brian Cranston and Helen Mirren are fantastic in this movie. They are absolutely worth seeing this movie for, and they definitely deserve their Golden Globe nominations. The supporting cast is really strong as well. However, when it comes to the writing, this movie, ironically, as a movie about a really good screenwriter, it just doesn't hit the mark. It could have been so much better. It could have hit harder in some places where I could tell it was aiming to hit, but it just didn't. And I ended up giving this movie three and a half out of five stars. Definitely enjoyable and definitely worth checking out for the performances, but 
not something you need to rush out and see in theaters. Then I saw one of the most gorgeous movies of the year and that was Macbeth directed by Justin Kurtzel and starring Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard. It is just... I cannot get over how beautiful this movie is. I do have a full review of this movie, so I'm not going to talk about it. Check out my review if you want to know more. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. Then I went to see The Danish Girl, which was a movie I was really looking forward to, starring Eddie Redmayne and Alicia Vikander. It's loosely based on the true story about a painter who was one of the first people to undergo a sex change surgery. And I have to say I was a bit underwhelmed by this movie. I thought the performances were really good. I thought it was shot beautifully. However, I definitely thought that the writing could have been better and that seems to be the theme of this year really for me because I saw so many movies that had really beautiful performances but really deserved better writing and this is definitely one of them. I also have a bit of a gripe with this movie for not casting a transgender person in the lead role. Like why was Eddie Redmayne in this movie aside from being Oscar bait? I really do feel like this is something they should have done and this is where this movie feels most like Oscar bait because they didn't do that and they cast Eddie Redmayne. Come on Hollywood. Ended up giving this three and a half out of five stars. After that, I saw Star Wars The Force Awakens. I saw it twice in theaters and to be honest, if there is nothing good that comes out in January, I'll probably go see it again because I really, really enjoyed this movie. I do have a full review on this, so not gonna talk about it once again, but I gave it four and a half out of five stars and I had a blast at the movie theater watching it both times. After that, I went to see The Big Short, which is a movie I didn't think I would enjoy as much as I did, but I really did like it. It made me angry. It made me want to do more research. It made me learn some things that I wasn't aware of. And I thought the performances were really good as well. I think what surprised me the most about this movie is that it could have been really boring, but it actually ended up being entertaining. And yes, sometimes they try a little bit too hard bringing in celebrity cameos to explain things to the audience. And they definitely break the fourth wall a lot, which was interesting, but at times, once again, felt like trying too hard but still ended up really enjoying it. I do wish that cinematography was a little bit better because they were going for this whole documentary feel that kind of looked unpolished with a lot of zooms and a lot of things out of focus but it just it could have worked a little bit better in my opinion. I ended up giving this four out of five stars because I still ended up really liking it. And the last movie that I saw in December was The Hateful Eight from Quentin Tarantino. Did a review on this recently so check it out. I really enjoyed the movie. Not my favorite Tarantino film but still definitely a very fun experience especially if you go see the 70 millimeter roadshow special engagement. It is a lot of fun. Ended up giving it four out of five stars and it is definitely an experience. That's it for my December wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you watch this entire thing, extra thanks to you because you watch my stuff no matter how long it is and I really appreciate that. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you've seen or read any of these things. As always, I would love to know what you think and if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope you're having an awesome day and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!